Hello Year 9. So we are now on Lesson 5 of the Cyber Security Topic. Before I go any further, under your Google Classroom, Term 3, Cyber Security, L5, there's no place like 127001. That's where the work is. This video I'm recording now will also be added and this is where you'll find it. Um, so there's a couple of worksheets. A1, I want everyone to do. L5, you may or may not get time. And then there is a uh, Jamboard, which I'm hoping well, you'll be able to make a copy of an edit. We'll see when we get there. So here are the slides. I'm just going to run through these. So um, in this lesson, we will be comparing security threats in terms of the probability of them happening and their potential impacts to the organizations and how we can protect against these threats. So here are some stats. Always treat statistics with great suspicion. Um, but yes, the, num the amount of spending on cybersecurity is forecast to reach $133.7 billion in 2022. I don't know. Um, that's, that's a lot of money. It's big business. Cybersecurity is big business. Um, one of the stats, stats I was the most suspicious of was this one on the bottom. 2% of breaches featured hacking. 28% involved malware, 32 to 33% included social engineering. So, I mean, that doesn't add up to 100. I don't really know where the rest of it goes. Um, but these things that we have talked about are significant. I think the thing to notice there is that social engineering is the biggest one, um, which is definitely going to be true. Humans are definitely the weak point and are the most exploitable. So question one. Um, there will be an assessment which hopefully you'll get time to do which will go through these so you can just sort of think about these for now but uh, Trojans, spyware, adware and worms are all examples of and you've got a series of options uh, just pause, think and then off we go so they are all malware malicious software that is the umbrella term that covers them all question two what is the term for when human users of a system are tricked into providing confidential information pause think. And now the answer to that, social engineering, tricking humans for is social engineering. Uh, we have specific examples, phishing, blagging, shouldering and name generator attacks. We looked at those a few lessons ago. Question three, which of the following would be correct term for a large collection of malware infected devices used to perform an attack or to exploit known weaknesses? We looked at this briefly last lesson. There are the options. The correct one is botnet. So a series of computers that have all been infected and are now under the control of a malicious actor, that is a botnet. It can be used to conduct a DDoS. The botnet might have been infected using a Trojan and penetration testing can be used to um, kind of sort detect the weaknesses in a legal fashion. But a botnet is what we're looking at there. So what are the greatest security threats. We've given you, you've looked at this website before I think and there's a worksheet so I'm just going to skip out of here and open this website up. You are going to open that website up then you have a worksheet, the A1 worksheet. Here is what it should look like and all you've got to do is read uh, that website and look at the and type in the answers here okay and then you've got an explorer question and I think you should all have a go at this. Why do you think these are the most targeted? So if I was doing this now, I'm going to look at this and say top targeted industries, it's down here on the right, education, government, ISP, MSP. So internet service provider and managed service provider. I think that would count things like Amazon web hosting and stuff like that. So your answers would be in here, education, just fill them in. What are the top three malware types? Uh, again, those are down here, banking, backdoor and botnet. So that would be the answer to that. See what the answer is when you look at it, it could change. Um, in the UK, which malware trend makes up the largest percentage of attacks? Well, on here, you can actually click on the UK. I hope you're good enough at geography that you can find that without too much tra um, trouble. And it brings up this window here. And so it looks like banking Trojans are the thing at the moment. So why do you think the industries listed above are the most targeted? So that's where you get to think about why these things might be targeted and just write your answer there. So that's that worksheet. And that's how to find the answers. Uh, protecting yourself against uh, from cyber attacks. So uh, you have to, as an organization, do this kind of work, have the entire departments dedicated to it. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, there's a risk analysis Jamboard. I'm not 100% sure how well this is going to work for you. So if you are unable to edit the Jamboard or for any reason, then don't worry too much. I will be online during the lesson so we can thrash it out. What I have done 
because this was a Google Doc, which was really hard to edit. Um, I've created a Jamboard, which should open like this, and you should get your own copy. And you've got a graph, impact versus probability. For each of these attacks, I want you to think about what's the potential impact? Is it going to be high impact, or is it going to be low impact? And what's the probability of it happening? So ransomware, for example, I think, well, that would be quite high impact, but it's probably quite unlikely, so maybe I'll put it there. Um, Internal threats from student or staff. What's the likelihood that students might misuse the network? I, that might be quite high. Is the impact quite high? Well, it could be, but they shouldn't be allowed to do stuff. So for each of these, just try and drag it onto the uh, the graph, and hopefully it will let you edit it, and we'll see. If you have any problems, you can ask me in the lesson, but don't spend too much time on it. Uh, but it is a quite important um, exercise to think. So protection, you can never be 100% sure, um, secure against attackers. You just have to make yourself harder to attack than the next juiciest target. It's the same with physical security. Um, but what can we do? Firewalls. Firewalls are something that you have on individual machines, you have on entire networks, and they are basically there for any network traffic coming in or out of the network. Um, it will have a look at it and say, well, actually, is that something we want to allow? Um, and so you know that the school's going to have stuff like this. It prevents things like Discord working at the moment, which, uh, and you know, various sort of social media things and gaming websites. It's the firewall that is uh, stopping a lot of these things happen. Um, it should be stopping packets coming in, so it should be impossible from the outside world to kind of scan all the machines on our network. This is the firewall that is doing this. Anti malware. So this is special software which detects. It scans files, it scans network traffic on a machine and goes, actually, you know, this looks like malware. We know what malware looks like and this is it. Um, a lot of operating systems have pretty good malware detection built in, but there are separate products that you can install. Uh, it's up to you whether you think you need to. I think you should always have anti-malware, but I, I tend to stick to the default um, operating system provision because it is pretty good these days. Um, there is a concept of quarantining files that may be bad, but you're not sure, um, to kind of give um, files that look iffy a chance to be useful if they are actually um, okay. So there is this idea of quarantining things. Um, so why is what is that? What is meant by that is kind of a question for you, but we kind of talked about it. Um, obviously, quarantine is a big thing in the real world. It's the same thing in in files. So you might download a file, and like, I'm not really sure if this is okay. You put it in a safe place on the computer where it can't execute and all this kind of stuff and then uh, you've got time to kind of look at it and decide. So auto updates. This is probably the most important thing these days is software tends to update itself in the background and um, that's what it's meant by automatically updating and um, if you are automatically updating your software you are patching the security holes that viruses exploit. Viruses can only propagate because they're exploiting weaknesses in software. If you're keeping your software up to date, then that is a really good way of protecting yourself. If you're running on old software, that tends to be where the problems occur, like the NHS running on Windows XP because they need XP for various bits of software. It's very easy for software to get out of date because it all depends on each other. But if you keep it up to date, you are much more likely to be safe. Um, so let's jump on. Uh, user authentication. So you have to log on to school systems. You can't just sort of rock it, turn them on and you're in. You have to have passwords. What could be put in place to make it even more secure? I will add a question to the classroom for you to answer um, in terms of if you can think of anything. Um, here are a series of options. Uh, we'll just go straight to the options. Secure passwords. So I have a thing called uh, LastPass on my phone, which I use to make secure passwords. Maximum number of attempts to log in before an account is locked. So if someone's trying to guess your password and they don't know what it is, that should be pretty easy to detect. And then you just lock the account. Capture is one of those like, you know, please select all the cats, like those anti-robot things to stop scripts brute forcing your password. Biometrics is an example of two-factor authentication where you also have to have like your fingerprint scan or your face scan um, in addition to your password. So even if they get your password, that's not a, good enough. The other type of two-factor authentication is the code generator apps, which some of you may even have. 
Um, user permissions. Even once you are in the network, as a student, are you allowed to do all the same things that the teachers are allowed to do? Are the teachers all allowed to do the same things as the school administrators are allowed to do? No, very likely not. You, When you're on a computer system, what you are actually permitted to do should generally be locked down behind a system of permissions. Um, and it shouldn't be the same for all users. So you might have a series of permissions like can they read and write data? Can they use all the printers? What software can they run? Which websites are they allowed to access? It'll be different for each system. So if you um, have permissions on and a student's account gets hacked, that hacker can only do what a student is allowed to do. So it can mitigate the amount of damage. Um, it can also uh, mitigate from accidental damage. So students might do things by accident, but because they're not permitted to write to certain areas, that can reduce the damage. Um, and so if you're thinking about the receptionist at an organization, what should they be allowed to do? Should they be allowed to look at like pupil data, registers, that kind of thing? Um, but we're not going to worry about that now. We'll get straight onto the, the, the worksheet. Um, and then if this is your last lesson, you can do the assessment. One. Um, so homework, let's have a look. The homework's quite a fun one. You have, uh, if you have time, have a look at this. Um, you have to think about what the most significant risk to the school network is. Uh, describe it and why it is a threat and then what steps they can take. So you might decide the students are the biggest threat um, and you might want to lock their permissions down and all this kind of stuff. You might have a different idea. You might think that the teachers are the biggest threat or maybe external hackers. So have a think about it. Write down what you think the most significant threat is. Describe it. It's all the stuff that we've covered, so just pick something that we've talked about and pick a mitigation against it. Pick whatever protection mechanism you think is the most appropriate. Um, and then hand that in and you are done.